And then if I go back to zero, I still stay at two. If I touch three, I'm at three. Then if I go back and touch zero, I'm still at three. If I go back and touch two, I'm still at three. Hello guys, welcome back to another Easy Game Mechanics tutorial. Today we're going to be talking checkpoints. I'm going to show you how to create checkpoints on a basic platform level. I'm going to show you how if you pass a checkpoint and die, you respawn at that specific checkpoint and not back at the beginning of the level. So if that's what you're trying to accomplish in your game, stay tuned because that's what we're going to do today. First thing we're going to need is some ground. So let's just make a block. And we're going to have gaps for us to fall down and be able to respawn back at certain checkpoints. I'm going to rename this ground and I'm going to give it the solid behavior. Next thing we need is a player. So I'm going to create a very simple 16 by 16 square, color it green. And I'm going to give that the platform behavior. And just so he doesn't run off the screen too quickly, I'm going to slow his speed down to 50 and I'm going to just leave it at default controls so the arrow keys will make him jump quite high and move. In fact, 50 is probably a bit slow. Let's go 120, change the jump strength to 300. And there we go. So now I can jump over the gaps and I can fall down the gaps. Now, First thing we need to do is set a event that says if we fall down the gap, we respawn back at the beginning. So let's go ahead and create our first checkpoint, which will act as the start of the level. I'm going to use a sprite for this. I'm going to make it 16 by 16. And because this is absolutely not a tutorial on how to do art, I'm just going to make a straight line in a darker green. That's going to be our checkpoint. You can make yours as pretty as you want. I'm going to call it checkpoint and this is going to have to have an instance variable. So this individual sprite here is going to have different numbers based on the checkpoint that it is. So I'm going to call that ID in name. I'm going to leave it as a number and the initial value is going to be zero because it's checkpoint zero at the beginning of the level. I'm going to hold down control on the keyboard and I'm going to drag out a copy and another copy. I'm going to put those at the beginning of each platform and I'm going to change the ID to one on that one and two on that one. And you can have as many of these as you want. Now we need to go back to the event sheet and we need to right click and we need to add a global variable and we need to call that variable current checkpoint. And that again is also gonna be a number. And this variable is gonna track where we are on the layout. Let's go back to the event sheet, add an event and we're gonna say sprite, which is our player character on collision with another object. And we're gonna choose the checkpoint so we're going to add the action and we're going to say system and we're going to say set value of current checkpoint, which is the checkpoint that we just created. We're going to set that value to the checkpoint sprite dot ID, which is the instance variable that we created within it. So if you remember that number there. So as soon as we touch one of these, we're going to set this global variable to equal whatever that individual checkpoint is. So that is going to be a dynamic number that changes based on where the character is in the game. So if we touch this one, it's going to change it to one. If we touch this one, it's going to change it to two. Now we need to create a event that uh, deals with the death of the character. And I'm going to very, very simply just add in another sprite. And I'm not going to be too worried about the dimensions of it. I'm going to just shrink it down. And this probably isn't the best way to do it. I'm sure there's better ways to deal with death. In fact, there is. But for the sake of this tutorial, it's not a tutorial on respawning. I just want to create a condition that sends the sprite back to the beginning. So I'm going to say that if the sprite touches this, Again, you can use it by comparing Y variables or whatever, but as soon as I'm going to say, as soon as we touch this, we're going to go back and respawn. Uh, I'm just going to call this death bar. So I'm going to say add an event. I'm going to say sprite, and I'm going to say on collision, where are we? On collision with another object, we're going to call that death bar. So as soon as we've fallen off the bottom of the screen, we're going to go back and we're going to respawn the player. Uh, and to do that, I'm going to create a function. So I'm going to say, add function and I'm going to say player respawn and 
when we call that function, so we can add the action, go ahead and call the player respawn function. So we're going to add a sub event and we're going to say checkpoint and we're going to compare the instance variable. And we're going to say if the ID of that checkpoint is equal to the global variable current checkpoint, then we're going to go ahead and set the player's position to that checkpoint. Checkpoint.x and checkpoint.y. So we're going to set its position to checkpoint.x, checkpoint.y. So what it's effectively going to do is when we die and hit that bar, we're going to run that function. We're going to go ahead and do a check, and we're going to check all three of these. Let's get, the system's going to check the 0, the 1, or the 2, and it's going to say which one of those numbers is equal to this global variable up here. And remember, every time we touch one of these, we're going to set that number to the checkpoint. Now, this is going to throw up a glaring bug if you just leave it like this, because if I touch this one, then I jump back and I touch this one again, it's going to go ahead and set the checkpoint back to zero. So if I just go ahead and show you that in real time, if I, well, I think I've touched the one now. So if I fall down, I'm going to respawn at the one. If I touch the two, I'm going to go down and respawn at the two. But if I go back and touch the two again and fall down, I'm going to respawn at the two. And again, if I go back to the beginning, I'm going to respawn at the one. And we don't want that. We want to respawn at the most current one that we have touched. So the way we do that is we add a condition. And we add that condition on this line right here. So we say if the sprite or the player collides with the checkpoint, instead of going ahead and setting it to the checkpoint um, ID, we're going to do a sub event and we're going to check to see how high that number is. And we're going to say system and we're going to compare that current variable. So we're going to say if it's greater than or equal to checkpoint dot ID. So if it's greater than the current checkpoint that we're already on, then we're going to update the checkpoint. If it's less than, it's not going to do that. So that should fix all of our problems. So at the moment, if I fall off the ledge, I'm going to go back to one. If I touch number two, I'm going to go back to one. Less than or equal to. There you go. And then if I go back to zero, I still stay at two. If I touch three, I'm at three. Then if I go back and touch zero, I'm still at three. If I go back and touch two, I'm still at three. If you've got a suggestion for a tutorial in the future, I have a Discord. There's a link in the description. You can join the Discord. And I have a channel on there where you can leave suggestions for future tutorials. And if I can and I'm able to do the tutorial, I will do it and post it on the video in due course. Thanks for watching.